I'm releasing my game at the end of the month and I still have a lot of things to do. Fixing bugs, cutting off features, handling music, creating promotional stuff, contacting YouTubers, streamers, press, and more. It's a lot and I want to take you on the journey with me. So let's rewind a few days in the past at the beginning of October 2022 when I announced the release date for Dashpong. P.S. I wanted to do a bit of a vlog style taking you with me but I got COVID two weeks before release. So I didn't film a lot, you'll have to do with voiceover. I was thinking about release since around July. Dashpong was already pretty close to good enough, I was just missing some stability and a few things here and there. To be completely honest with you, I could have worked on the game for another year. Releasing something is hard, and the longer you work on something, the harder it becomes. At the same time, I was getting bored of working on Dashpong. I initially thought I could be done with the game in about 6 months. I'm aiming for a release before the end of 2021, uh, probably around mid-December. It's a very short deadline, so we'll see how it goes. But for many reasons, it didn't happen. I'll talk more about that in the future video, retracing my last year as a game dev, so stay tuned for that. The truth is that I was having a really hard time working on Dashpong in the recent weeks. We often hear devs talk about post-release depression, and I think I was having something similar but pre-release. After feeling like shit for a few weeks, I finally decided that in order for me to do the thing I had to do and move on, I had to decide on a release date. Even if the game was not ready, having a release date would force me to decide what is important or not and find the courage to finish it. That's why I decided to release Dashpong on October 28th. I choose this date for two reasons. First, it's at the end of the month and the Steam's algorithm only starts to push your game during the month it's going to release. It's not like it's going to make a huge difference for Dashpong because it's pretty small, but you never know. Second, it's on a Friday, so it means people buying the game might have a chance to play it right away. I think it's important because Dashpong is a local multiplayer game. It's also a very important thing to get those early reviews that are super important for an indie game. Releasing a game is like abandoning it. It's a rough moment where you have to face reality and decide what you really want to keep or not. In my case, during the first year of development, I thought about many ideas and I also got lots of suggestions from people. I was really excited for some of them, but the reality is that I can't do everything and I have to prioritize. For example, I decided to drop the tournament and training mode. For the first one, I imagined people gathering and being more than four wanting to play the game. Having a tournament mode handling the logic of who should play against who felt like a good idea. But when I thought about it again, I understood it was was way too much work for something that might be used quite rarely. If people want to organize tournament, they can easily use online tools to help them, or use the good old pen and papers. Training mode was a hard choice. On one hand, I wanted people to be able to experience the game alone, or just give it a try at least, and on the other, it was adding a lot of work for a result that was not at the level of quality I wanted. Putting more work into it so close to release didn't make sense to me. Dashpong is a local multiplayer game first so having a solo mode is definitely not a priority. I couldn't even just release as is because it simply doesn't work anymore. When I created it for the February Next Fest, Dashpong was a very different game, both internally and visually. I think adding AI would have a much greater impact than the training mode. Talking about AI, I also decided to cut it off from the initial release, simply because it's not an easy thing to get right, and I was lacking time to make it functional. This is still something I think can have a huge impact on the game, not only for playing alone, but also helping fill in the spots when playing with friends. Beside that, I did a lot of small bug fixes and various improvements. I went through my Trello and made sure everything was clean. For each card, I decided if it was relevant or not, or if it was something for a future update. It's a good feeling to go through everything, it gives you a clear vision of what you need to do. Overall, I didn't have any major bug or anything, but lots of small quality of life features. For some reasons, I didn't really have music at this point. I was working with AudioPad for the SFX and music, but they couldn't work on it for personal reasons. I needed to find people to do music for me. I should have worked on that earlier, but as I told you minutes ago, I didn't feel really great working on Dashpong. In the end, I was lucky enough to have been contacted by many musicians over the month I've worked on Dashpong. 
I finally settled on working with two of them, five in-game musics, one for the title screen, one for the trailer, one for match point, and one for the match finish screen. Working with them was quite easy, I showed them some references and style that I like for Dashpong, and that was it. I also created a little music player to showcase what music was playing. It's unnecessary, but I felt like it was a great addition. It will briefly show during gameplay to signify a new song is playing, and it will be visible in the pause menu. As you can see, it's very inspired by Rocket League. I don't have much to say about localizing Dashpong to be honest. I'm very lucky to have super cool people coming from all around the world in my community, wanting to help me with translation. So I want to say a huge thank you to them. I don't really have a strategy when it comes to contacting press or streamers, and I think it's a tedious process and you just have to look online who could be a good fit and contact them. What I do is I systematically send a key when reaching out. It doesn't cost me anything, so if they don't use the key or don't play the game, it's not a huge impact. The good point is that it's much faster for me that way. I don't personally interact much with press as a reader or viewer, so I had to make some research to know which one to contact. I don't limit myself to international press as I'm French, so I also contact French press and streamers. I've also used the Steam Creator Connect to reach out to Steam Creator. I don't know if this has a big impact, but at least it's integrated into Steam, so it might be even easier to deal with. I should also work on local events to promote Dashbog, but I don't really have the energy right now. I'll see how I feel about that after release. Oh, and if you're a streamer, YouTuber, press, and you want to try Dashpong, get in contact with me by email and I'll send you a key. As you can see, releasing is not all sunshine and rainbow, at least for me. I think I've made the mistake of spending too much time on Dashpong, and I'm at a point where I just want to move on. This is something I need to think about for my next game. I think having clear deadlines can help a lot, especially when you have a tendency to procrastinate. Still, making games is hard, and releasing them is even harder, so I'm really glad I finally did it. My goal with Dashpong was finishing and releasing my first commercial game, so in that sense, it's already a pretty big success.